Gunners Collective TV. Back at it, you already know. Like a motherfucking smack at it. Bye, ya. Bye, ya. And in menudo style or direct fashion, we're going to get straight into the content of the day. But before we do, let's hit that like and subscribe button. Ding. Put your notification bell on all so that way you're directing the direction of the dope content that I am kicking. And I highly appreciate all the support, man. We're going up on this channel. It's all because of you. And for that, I can say I'm very humbled and very appreciative. So as you can tell, a little bit of a different mix, but it's all good. Same old tricks. It's the gun gun. Bang, bang. So I wanted to talk about the woodpile, brother, and that situation that happened in the San Fernando Valley. Now, there's more than meets the eye there, right? There's a lot that went into that. A lot of people got caught up. A lot of families will be destroyed. But there was a lot of families being destroyed on the streets even prior to that situation happening. And it's kind of like an all's well, ends well situation and it never ends well when people are incarcerated, man, to be honest with you and to tell you the truth. But there are some individuals, man, that are probably better off behind bars than others. Let's just keep it real. But, man, I seen lately, you know, people are posting content about a YouTuber, OG Badger, right? Now, OG Badger was probably one of the first prison genre content creators I came across when I first started. And he was a wood brother. And I remember watching several of his spills and listening to the good old wood stories and I could tell the way he told him there was a lot of authenticity to his stories. You know, you could tell this was someone who had been where he said he has been, been around the block, um, definitely was an ex-convict. There's a difference between inmates and ex-convicts. This guy was definitely a wood and an ex-convict. I mean, was still functioning, considered active, allegedly. Now, he was very inconsistent with his content. See, for a while there, it was all full go for Badger. He was on Big Herc's channel, which I tripped out that a wood at that level would sit down with the brother, man. But I, I understand that the streets and prison are very different. Whereas in prison, the woods and the blacks don't really fraternize with each other, don't really converse, um, only unless it's about business or, you know, a good morning, a good night, something like that, common courtesies. But as far as functioning, they don't function on the same side of the yard. They don't kick it. They don't really have too many words for each other. But on the streets, it's much different. See, I met a lot of white dudes that were that were woods in prison, brother, like real woods, right? Um, and some of them actually became the next level and just went all out. But they weren't like that before they touched down. You know, um, on the streets, they had black friends, Mexican friends, Asian friends. Um, a lot of them were never playing that racial stuff, but got into the California prison system and realized that there's a racial divide. Whether you like it or you don't, you will adhere to it. You will play by it. You will play by those rules or you'll get done by the same people that are making those. And that's just the way it is. I believe Badger was one of them guys. I believe he was an individual that didn't care what anyone thought, man. Went in there, did his time with his people like he was supposed to. Got out and functioned like he was supposed to. And kind of did whatever he wanted to do. So when I first saw him on Big Herc's channel, who's a brother out of Sacramento, you know, I kind of wondered, man. To what degree of wood is this brother right here? Is he the E, the I, or the R, right? Um, but he definitely was about his shit. One thing I liked about Badger was he was no nonsense, didn't play no games, was right off the cuff with it, and told you exactly the way it was. And I could identify with this, a lot of his stories. They rang a lot of truth. Not like Wes Watson, whose stories got holes this big, bigger than his asshole. Everyone could see in it, and there's a 128G sticking out. With Badger, there was none of that. It was cut and dry. This was the Woods program. This is what he experienced. These were his life experiences. And you could respect it. Now, Badger started to become very inconsistent with his content. Um, you know, it was a hit and miss situation. Now, I understand YouTube doesn't work out for everyone. You know, a lot of people have these grand ideas of becoming a YouTube content creator and think because they got a few stories to tell that they're going to blow up. And that ain't the way it works on YouTube, man. You either blow up because YouTube wants it that way or you don't. It's a lot of luck, a lot of hard work, a lot of consistency, a lot of being real and a lot of having, I guess, that you got to have good communication skills, but not even more so than that. You got to be charismatic person, polarizing figure, someone that people like, want to hear, want to listen to and enjoy their stories. Bang. That's why I did that, right? But I remember when I first started watching them, I took a lot of the things that I did and said from OG Badger. People like Big Herc, Badger, several others, man, that I kind of watched and kind of like not mimicked, but understood their style and created my own style off of them. And he was definitely one of them. When I tell my Woods stories, my Super Woods on the other channel, 
He's definitely part of that influence because I've done time with woods like Badger. I've done time with several other woods and have kicked it with woods on the streets. And I can tell you, brother, they're all fucking solid, right? The ones that I kicked it with. Now, when this bust happened last week, 68 woods, man, and associates incarcerated for various crimes, ranging all the way from conspiracy to commit murders to drugs, guns. I mean, so many other charges. Now, like I said in the spill when it first popped off, a lot of these guys are going to get out. A lot of these guys were just locked up because they knew somebody who was doing something. They were in an association. They might have got caught with a minor possession. Might be a probation or parole violation for hanging around known gang members or people that are in the mix. Um, that's how it is when they do a RICO or they do any type of uh, big uh, bus, big raids, man. Everyone in the house is going. You know, men, women, and children. Let's go. Everyone put the cuffs on them. We'll figure it out later. That's usually how it goes. Now... Badger got caught up in these busts, and I say that to say this, you know, sometimes YouTube doesn't work out for everyone, and I heard that Badger had just got out of doing a jail term, that he was trying to get back into the YouTube mix, I seen a couple videos he dropped, but one thing I could tell you about YouTube is once you get out of the algorithm, and you're not as consistent as you used to be, you kind of fall off, YouTube stops pushing your content, and it makes it hard if you depend on the money to make the money that you need uh, to live the way you want to live. So I think YouTube just did not work out for Badger and maybe quite perhaps Badger was back in the streets if he ever left him. Now, it's hard to take that mentality out of a person. You know, those of us that live that criminal lifestyle, that gang lifestyle, that hood lifestyle, barrio, whatever you want to call it for so many years, you never forget that. You could drop out, fall back, fall off, be no good no more. You never forget the elements of the streets. The streets are always going to be there. You're always going to know how to wiggle and move on them. And there's a lot of people that come on YouTube and they push the propaganda of trying to help people, trying to change them, trying to find a new path. When at the same time, they're still caught up in the mix. They are still wiggling. They're still functioning. You know, it always boggled my mind that, you know, active gang members or active guys that are still in good standings within their gang or their people would be on YouTube trying to dissuade people from doing the same thing they're actually doing. See, it's like calling the kettle black. You can't tell someone to do something you're not doing. You can't tell people, hey man, it's all bad. Don't do drugs and then turn around and get high. It doesn't work that way. You know, you have to lead by example. True leaders are not made, they're born, right? So if you don't have those leadership qualities, if you don't, if you're not personable, if you're not real, you know, and it doesn't mean you're not a real vault or you're not a real person. It doesn't mean you really can't handle business. It just means you can't push out a narrative or tell someone to do something you're not willing or trying to do yourself. You know, there's an old saying, man, you can't help others if you can't help yourself. And if you're still running amok and you're out there in the streets doing dirt or getting caught up, then people are going to look at the knowledge you were trying to get that they didn't get in college, right? And give to them and be like, look, this vault is still in the mix. He's still out there active game banging. How the fuck's he going to tell me and my kids not to gangbang and don't go to prison and it's all bad, yet he's in and out of county jails and prison himself. Now with Badger, I don't believe he was one of those ones trying to dissuade people from joining gangs. I don't believe he was doing that. I think he was merely entertaining people, telling his true prison stories, and still living that life, allegedly. So, you know, he got caught up. And I'm not too sure on his charges. I didn't do my homework to look Badger's charges up. But from what I'm hearing, man, he might be sitting down for a minute. And it's unfortunate. It's unfortunate because Badger did have what it takes to be a good YouTube content creator. For a while there, he was running the show, man, for the woods before, of course, frivolous characters like Wes Watson came in the mix. And even good, good dudes, man, like Splinter came in the mix. You know, Badger was the representative for the whites, him and I think uh, Rich Smiley, you know, for the woods, the woodpile. People who've actually done time, been there and done that. You know, not everyone could say they did it. You could pretty much tell a person who's fabricating stories or bullshitting you just by the way they carry themselves. And if, if, if the T's don't cross and the I's are not dotted, some ain't right there. If you have to question the, authentic, the authenticity of the stories, you're probably right. Go with your gut feeling, right? Um, but again, YouTube is, mer is merely meant for entertainment and to push a narrative. You know, I myself, I tell my stories to entertain you talk about things that I've went through in my life, but I also want you to get an understanding that I do not want you to have to go there. That's why I tell you my stories. 
So that way you can sit back, listen, soak that knowledge you can't get in college and think about it and say, wow, this motherfucker made it. But did he really make it? Really, what does he have to show for it? Some clothes and a few fucking gold chains? That ain't nothing, right? I should already be owning homes and and, and being, being invested in businesses and things. You know, I'm already almost 50 years old and I'm just now trying to get there. So I would hope that you would understand and listen to the stories that I tell you and how I seen things and was involved in things that I don't want you ever to be involved in. And I believe Badger was painting the same picture. But at the same time, you know, the good old woods, brother, the streets are hard to shake. And when you've lived the criminal lifestyle for so long, you tend to go back, especially when you're not getting your money the way you're supposed to be getting your money. Now there's jobs. And I know the old saying, get off your lazy ass and go to work. Absolutely. I worked for several, several years before I found YouTube. I moved out of state to work before I found YouTube, regardless of what people say, oh, Gunnar got ran out of a city, huh? No, not really. I ran out of the city as far away from as I could to go get a job, right? Um, I seen the bigger picture. The bigger picture was if you still hang around the same individuals, if you're still out there doing the same old things, you're going to get the same results. My results were prison and getting shot and stabbed and jumped and beat up and uh, you know, hit from the side and all that. I experienced everything, okay, at one point in my life. And I also dished out all of that too. So in order for me to not fall victim to that same lifestyle and not create more chaos doing that, I got the fuck on. I found something that I'm good at. I found something that I can invest my time in and that I'm pretty consistent with. And I entertain people and people love me for that. And I love the fact that I'm loved because of that, man. I'm leaving my mark in this world. Badger was doing the same thing, but now Badger's caught up. You know, this is a situation where, man, um, if he does get an extensive amount of time, it's unfortunate and it's a big loss to the YouTube community, man, because this is someone who was actually kicking real rhythm, real stories, real vibes. And I respect it. You know, I can't say that about every YouTube content creator. There's some I flick on, they're brand new. I trip out on their stories. I'm like, ah, this Valto can't tell a good story. Or I call caca and bullshit, alpha bullshit, I call bullshit, right? Or um, I'm just not trying to hear the same old stories repeated. You know, the shit gets old after a while. You could only tell so many prison stories um, where, you know, and I've seen a lot of these guys, they'll tell stories that other people were involved in and put themselves in. You know, I know one particular YouTuber, man, I'm not even going to say his name because then they'll misconstrue it as hate. But one of my homeboys called me. He's a very well-known YouTuber, right? One of my homeboys called me like uh, a few months back. He was like, hey, bro, you watch this dude? I said, no, nah, I know him. I, I know of him. Like, why? What's up? He was like, what do you think? I said, his shit's pretty good. You know what I mean? You trip out on it? He was like, yeah, bro, but trip out. Was this Vato in Susanville with us? And I said, uh, not that I recall, right? And uh, he goes, uh, like, bro, I know this fool wasn't there. He goes, well, one of the homeboys was there. Um... And he ended up going out to a different state where this dude was, this particular YouTuber. He said, and the stories that this dude's telling are the homeboy stories that the homeboy was involved in. Like, that fool wasn't there. He's like, yeah, Charlie's, bro. I can't fuck with that. Like, I know for a fact he's telling the homeboy stories because that homeboy was my celly. And we were involved together in that fucking, in that shit, you know? So I was like, wow. You know, I couldn't believe, but I can believe it because people like, they want to spice it up, put a little tapatio to it. And it's all right, man. It's all right to tell a good story. And sometimes you get ahead of yourself. But at this particular person, man, tends to do that a lot, right? And once I heard that, I kind of looked into it. I said, wow, this guy's putting himself on yards he was never even at, right? Or uh, telling other people's stories just because it sounds good to make a little money off YouTube to basically manipulate and lie to the people Kind of like Wes Watson does, you know, take your money and give you one phone call and kick you in the ass and tell you bye bye. Anyways, Badger was not that type. His stories rang true. Um, they're verified and certified. And obviously, man, he was still out there in that mix because he got caught up in this situation. See, there's a lot of people that would judge you because you're a YouTube content creator. They don't know that you have lives outside of what we do here, right? They think that we're all storytellers or... We're all guys that just dropped out or fell off and that we're just trying to manipulate people or utilize people. When at the same time, there's a lot of truth and game that we're trying to give, whether it's game to still continue your criminal activities or it's game to get away from it. That's up to you to decide. You know, I've said it a long time ago, man. I'm not a positive nor a negative channel. I'm just a real channel. 
You know, I'm really going to tell you my true stories and you take it for what you want. And every once in a while, I'm human, man. So every once in a while, people are going to talk their shit. People are going to bring me into that, that put me onto that level, that lower level of the disrespect. And, and I don't really want to go there, man. I got nothing but respect and love for everyone. I think I've kept it real respectful with every group, blacks, whites, Mexicans, North, South. I'm one of the first YouTubers to do that, man, to actually break them barriers and show love to everyone. And a lot of people took pages out of my notebook, man, and ran with it. And I'm glad that they did because that shows that I impacted the culture. I impacted the people, right? Um, or at least I showed them a way to figure it out. So Badger getting caught up with these charges, what's it going to do to him? Well, you know, I was asked a question, you know, because he's a YouTube content creator, is he going to have it bad in there? You know, it works different for every different race. I'm going to be honest with you. If you're a brother, man, you're black, you have a YouTube channel, they're allowed to do whatever they want. They have free will. They're not under an authority or a group that says they can and can't do something. If you're white, you know, it's a little tricky. It depends on what yard you go to. You know, if you gave up too many names or you said too many things in your stories, you disrespected someone or maybe put out a name or two you shouldn't have, then you're going to have to answer for that, you know, because they're pretty structured, man, pretty militant. They... And they hold their people accountable, most definitely. Not to say the blacks don't, it's just different politics. When it comes to the Mexicans, it's very, very tricky, depending on if it's north or south. I know for the longest time, Norteños were not allowed on camera. Norteños were not allowed to give interviews. There was a lot of things Northerners were not allowed to do. I see now they have podcasts, they're doing interviews. A lot of them just stick to talking about rap, but they are asked questions about their neighborhoods, about vatos. I've seen hood vlogs now, vatos rocking around with big huelga birds and showing people their neighborhood and when they got jumped in. And I guess maybe a wheel I went out and they're allowed to do that. Whatever the case may be, bless them. With the Southerners, they've had podcasts. They're doing their thing. Um, again, you know, to be running around telling everyone you're active or you're still in the mix or showing them your hood, you're only inviting law enforcement and authorities into a glimpse of the inner workings of your body or your neighborhood or your mentality and the way you think. And basically that's dry snitching on yourself, but to each their own, right? Now, as far as Badger, obviously he was really in the mix still. He was really in the mix, man. He got caught up and, uh, you know, people are thinking, damn, you know, like the guy said, is he going to have a bad time in there? I have no idea to tell you the truth. I don't know what yard he's going to touch, whether it's a federal or just state charges. Um, but it's fucked up that an OG like Badger, who's been doing time, can't seem to get out of that mix. You know, but like I said, man, we all, if we're in that criminal lifestyle, you're kind of like there forever. Even if you change your life, find the Lord, get a good job, start raising your family, the tattoos, the markings of your tattoos, your mentality, where you've been never leaves. And you're always going to have to live with that. You know, um, I myself, man, I'm with my kids. I'm in a spot. I see some Southsiders, some Northerners walking. Automatically, I'm on my defensive, like, what's cracking? You know, a while back, man, I was at a mall. True story. I, didn't even, I don't even know if I told you guys this, but I was at a mall, and like three or four Northerners walked in. You know, and in Washington, there's a lot of Northennials. And so I always got to be aware that these dudes might be tripping because I'm non-active or whatever. But it is what it is, man. That's the life I chose, and if I got to get off where I'm at it, you know, I'm not trying to invite the devil to my doorstep, but sometimes I'm the devil at your doorstep. And I'm in the foot locker looking at some shoes and I see them walk in. I could tell by the, the haircuts, the way they're dressed. These are northerners, right? Active or non-active, I don't know. I was about to find out. So I'm not the type to just try to hide and duck and bob and weave. I'm here, I'm here. If this is it, this is that, right? So I kind of see one dude kind of eyeballing me a little bit. So I looked up, I'm like, what's up, bro? Are you active? Fuck it. They've asked me many times. It's my turn, right? Are you active? He was like, nah. Hey, he was like, hey, you're that YouTuber. I said, yeah, what's up? He said, oh, we fuck with you. We fuck with you. And I was like, yeah, bro, are you active? What's up? You know, like, you if you know, you know already what time it is with me, right? He was like, nah, bro, we ain't tripping off that politics shit. We just out here kicking it. Cool. Boom. Shook his vice off. Nice to meet you. He was from Hayward, living out in Washington. That's right, bro. And that was it, right? Now, again, man, life's a risk. And, and, when you're living that lifestyle, you get caught up in the situations around you. If you're not, that criminal lifestyle seems to always follow you. So you have to be aware. With Badger, man, um, again, I don't know exactly what his charges are, what he's going to get caught up for. 
But I hope and I pray, man, that he makes it out in one piece, that he's able to um, get back with his family. You, you know, um, that was a pretty serious raids that they did, man. It seemed like they targeted, you know, the woods. And, um, you know, I said it in my last spill. I thought the bigger fellas, you know, from the white organization getting caught up, this was a trickle down effect. And they focused in on someone in that particular area and they just got everybody and Badger just happened to get caught up. But that goes to show you that a lot of the YouTube content creators that people believe are suckers that are not, no longer functioning still are in the mix, man. Still are doing things. And law enforcement doesn't care if you're a YouTuber, a banker, a fucking whatever you are. Um, if your name's on that paper to go get you, they're going to go get you. Anyways, man, uh, we'll see how it all works out for him. With that being said, I hope that you move smooth with a purpose. Get everything. And, and before I say this, before I do my little ending spill, I'm giving you guys knowledge you can't get in college today. I'm giving you game. Soak it, man. You know, Badger was a real one. And now he's going to do, now he's going to face real consequences. You know, these people that are on here on YouTube trying to help you to change or help you to not live that lifestyle, listen to them. Because now you have re a real example to look at of someone who was really telling you the truth and was still doing whatever he was doing, allegedly. It's an ongoing case, so I'm not going to put too much on it. But I'm just saying, thumbs up or thumbs down. Heavy's going to be the head that wears the crown. I'm going to continue to strive, struggle, struggle, and strive for what I truly believe in, and that's the betterment of all people. Use your head, the gun.